Oh my God. Guys, we just dug a real piece of history here. All I can tell you guys right now is that it's pre-1885 because if it wasn't, it would say Canada on it. So I will do some research and we will get back to that guy later on in this video. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. All right guys, downtown for the evening run here. We got a couple hours of sunlight left and we got the park here that John and I first cleaned out. Stan and I have been back many times. I think there's still some old silver here, old coins for sure, and we're gonna try the Manicore. So not only have we pounded this park multiple times, multiple videos, probably pulled 150 coins out of here, but I see there are fresh holes all over. So somebody, possibly even Stan, uh, has been coming here. Stan refused to come here when John and I suggested it because of you know, this is a kind of area where there's a lot of drug use and needles and things, but um, so he wouldn't come. And then after he saw the good stuff that we found, it became his favorite park. So I don't know if it was him or not, but somebody's been here and there's holes all over here. So if I do find something with the Manicor, hey, that's even that's that's an even bigger nod to the Manicor. You guys want some more proof of how old this park is? We know it goes right back to turn of the century, but look at this bottle I just dug out of this hole. Yeah, look at that. That's old. That's like 1800s. Okay, and there is the item that was in the hole. Definitely, it has a star or something on the front. It's old. It's green, copper, brass, mixture of some kind. And then underneath that corrosion, there's a star. I think it's an old button. That button came out of the same hole as the glass. So, I mean, it could be 1800s. Probably is. Well, modern, but cool. It's a lighter. It's a great signal in terms of on the non-ferrous line, the number. It's not ringing up as high as I thought it would in terms of tone, but obviously we're gonna dig that not ringing up like a coin because it wasn't a coin I think it might be a ring not even a ring aluminum or something okay that one sounds like a coin looks like a coin yeah there it is and it is not a penny it is a quarter and it is 1979 Okay, I know why we got that. I'm like, that's strange that a quarter was ringing up like that, a Canadian quarter. And then I looked at the machine, and here's what I saw. So the other day, down at the beach, we were in 40 kilohertz, and that will make Canadian coins ring up like that quarter just did. So uh, I guess we're not really missing anything. All right, we've got another coin that we missed here. And it's a nickel. Oh, an old one. 1946. Check this out guys. Look at how thick that is. That is like glazed stoneware. That is heavy duty. That is one of the thickest pieces I have ever found. And again, it just supports the fact that this park goes back further than any of the local people here would even have a clue. Definitely, you know, probably 1850s or before. Damn, I was like, what did I just find here? Down there, six inches, shiny, black. And then I realized <laughs> it's not an artifact, it's not metal. Maybe maybe these leaves here will give you a little clue. <laughs> an acorn, some kind of petrified acorn. And in the same hole as the acorn, one of the fanciest zippers that I've ever found. Look at the shape of that. Kind of cool. Well, maybe not really. <laughs> not really. Another coin where nobody has dared to go. Well, that one's going to have to stay there, guys. It's all solid roots. I couldn't let it go because I thought, geez... 
This hedge is probably 70 years old. So what are the chances that this coin, even if it is only a penny, which is what it was ringing up like, could be old? And so I got it way down in there under the roots. It's right here. Oh, it's green. It's looking promising. It's not a large scent though, so it can't be that old. Well, I'm a gambler and 1970 is not the payoff I was hoping for, but if you think about it in terms of that coin, damn, that coin's like 50 years old, so I wasn't too far off about when it was probably dropped. Well, modern one in the plug. 2004. All right guys, new day, new adventure. I'm heading to a beach that I used to go to when I was a kid. It's kind of out of the way. You gotta drive quite a ways to get to this beach. The colonial trade route is not too far from this beach. In fact, the voyageurs may have crossed where this beach is. There's a very thin uh, peninsula. So, I mean, it's worth checking out. I've been here before, but I didn't really think about voyageur stuff. So let's keep that in mind today too. So this is the strip right here I'm talking about where they wouldn't have had much land to cross. So it would have been a good spot for them to bring canoes across here, you know, 300 years ago. Look at that black layer, mineralized layer that comes out of there. Look at all the mica floating around in there. And that is making my pinpointer go off like crazy. Okay, first coin and an old D-ring. That is old. I don't know how old though. And I'm not sure what material it's made out of. Because it's ringing right up into the 70s. But uh, the machine is having a real hard time. I had to, to put it in beach mode because that black mica layer, it's, uh, it's even messing up the detector. Junk. Okay, solid 25. I was expecting an American nickel, but it's Canadian. And it's gotta be an older one, I would think. I don't know. No, 1989. What's going on there? Well, solid 25 anyway. All right, that is a centennial penny from Canada, 1967. And we know that silver coins were made right up until 68. And one foot away from that penny, I found this. Believe it or not, that is a silver coin. 1961. I've never found a silver coin that looks like this though. It is cracked. That's seen a few winters out here on the beach, I guess. I'm gonna take the silver cleaner to that coin when I get home, just to have a better look. I've never seen a silver coin with all the cracks like that, but definitely silver. So, hey, we're just starting and we got silver already. I have hopes for this beach. Well, we know that one's not silver because that's one thing silver won't do and that's rust. That's modern junk. 10 cents, Canadian. So that coin is 2004, 20 years old. And look at it, nothing left of it. It's just one clump of rust on the back. Well, if that beach didn't have any treasure before, it's certainly done now. That spoon was down there two feet. Well, just out again with the Manicor at another school that has been shut down and is being demolished. In this very field, we did get one old silver, a 1907 quarter, I believe it was. One silver is all it takes for this guy to keep coming back. Here's one weird enough that I'm gonna dig. If you look at this trail down here, there's a long tail on it before it comes to the non-ferrous line. Maybe a piece of wire? Oh my God. Guys, we just dug a real piece of history here, okay? That's not it, that's not the history. That was in there. I don't know what that is. I gotta brush that off because of the other thing that I found in the hole with this. Look at this, an old military button. That's old guys, that could be 20s, 30s, 40s. I'm not sure, I gotta brush this off and see. I Like I said, schoolyards. I can't believe the stuff I find in schoolyards. 
What is that doing here? Some of you might recall that we dug some very old British buttons from the fort site. And guys, during my research for those buttons, I can tell you, I don't think this is Canadian military. I think it's British and I think it's old. Like this could be early to mid 1800s. Was this the site of some early military facility in Canada before the school was put in here? You know, a hundred years before, before the turn of the century, because I did find a 1907 quarter here as well. So there was definitely stuff going on, you know, at that turn of the century time frame. you know, bit before, bit after. Keep digging, I guess. Okay, a couple of feet from that button. We got a screamer here. Yeah, back to reality. That was ringing up 72, no idea why. Okay, right, I'm trying to show you guys the 2D screen here as to why I'm making some of these decisions. Okay, so obviously it's on the non-ferrous line, which is our, you know, coin and brass and all that line. But it's such a low number. This could be a weird pull tab. It's even lower than a pull tab. It could be a weird nickel. It could be tin foil, or it could be some mystery item. But because it's on that line, I have to dig it. And there it is, gold tin foil. You might be tempted to actually skip over something like that knowing, because I called it, it's gonna be tin foil. Um, a nickel will usually be solid 26. But you know, depending on the year, sometimes things are a little different. Um, you may be tempted to skip over that, but gold, actual gold can ring up anywhere in those low numbers from like four to six to the teens to the forties. So you can spend all the money you want on a machine like this to show you. And I mean, it's pretty cool that it shows you that it's, you know, you, you have a pretty good idea of what it's going to be before you ever dig it. But to be sure you still have to dig it. Okay. We'll try this again. 14 down there on the non-ferrous should be tinfoil. I just dug that one to prove a point and show you guys the manicore is good shit. I'm calling gold on this one. Well, not gold. Tin foil gasket used on the yogurt drinks that all those kids rip off and throw in the playground. There's probably a thousand of them out here. That kind of inspires me to do something different with this machine for a video idea is to maybe come out and just dig a hundred of those signals that are a nice round dot on the non-ferrous line, you know, uh, 40 and below, okay? And we should just do a hundred of those signals and just boop, 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 fire them off in a video and see if we get any surprises. Do we actually get any jewelry or is it all junk? You know, we'd have a percentage then of how much of it is actually junk out of 100 digs. If you guys wanna see something like that, something different, comment below. I mean, I literally moved six inches and there's another one, a different number, 11. And again, down there, I don't even wanna dig this one because I know what it is. All right, one final, we'll just, ah, oh, we'll dig it just because. Nope, yep, tin foil mystery. Was it ham, pickles? I always crack these open and look for a coin to be in there, but there never is. Don't worry, I'm not going to dig any more tinfoil, but the takeaway from this is, now you got to remember guys, that machines like the Simplex and the Garrett AT Pro and my old bounty hunter would ring every one of those pieces of tinfoil up as a treasure into the high 70s and it would ring up just like a coin. These new machines, the Equinox 600 was just as good, knows that it's tinfoil get that out of here here's your low number move along and that is why mine lab is you know in my books top for weeding out that stuff 57 58 on the non-ferrous line that is going to be a pull tab okay not a pull tab a tube of blue paint okay i am curious as to what a one or two and being on the non-ferrous line, what is that gonna be? Juice box liner, and I'll tell you, that was a pain in the ass to find. The pin pointer will not go off unless it's touching. You know, you can be that close to it and it won't go off. 
So it took me forever, and look at the size of the hole I had to dig to find that. But now we know, one slash two on the Manicore scale of junk. All right, moving on. Curiosity, no more. High singing coin tones only from this point on. All right, that is a coin of some kind. Of course it is. Eh, 1973 Canada nickel. Well, there's another one. Okay, this button, guys, back to our British button. This is an amazing find. Immediately, when I looked at that, I got home, I was like, I have seen that exact design. Well, here is our 1790 silver button that we dug. I'll show you a close-up of both of these. This has the exact same GR and crown. Now, the crown is a little bit uh, wider on the top. Uh, definitely a solid silver button here, and it's not a two-piece button. This button is dated to 1790. I'll show you guys that I have found two samples online. I've looked through hundreds of buttons that have this GR and crown. Okay, one sample here is the Ross Guards 1794-1820, and it's got the GR. Okay, and here's our second sample, Royal Dublin Militia 1793-1829. Okay, so the button on the left is our silver 1790s. You can see the crown is a little bit different than the one on the right. And the button on the left is not a two-piece, where this one here is. So I would say with great certainty that we can put this button here in the early 1800 range, no later than 1829. So I would say, you know, 1820s button. What was that doing in a schoolyard? No idea.